It's officially fall, which means the holiday season has begun. Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. It's all approaching so quick. Are you ready for the holidays? Not quite, but I am ready to get out and enjoy fall weather and fall activities. Let's see what's going on this month. I'm Taylor Rakestraw. And I'm Jessica Lord, and this is the PC Scene. On behalf of the whole team, I want to welcome you to the PC scene. We're so glad to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Want to kick off Halloween right? Paulding County Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs is excited to host their annual Trick or Treat Village on Saturday, October 26th from 2 to 7 at Earl Duncan Park. There will be candy, fun and games, and best of all, admission is free. So bring your family and your best costumes for trick or treating. We stopped by the Hiram Public Library and talked with Elizabeth to find out what is happening this month at our Paulding County Libraries. Hi, we're here with Elizabeth at the Hiram Library. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So what all can you tell us is going on at the Paulding County Libraries for the month of October? The Dallas Library is having a Halloween costume exchange. Between the days of October 10th and the 24th, you can bring your gently used Halloween costumes and you'll get a ticket to return October 25th between the times of 11 to 4 for a new to you costume. And then October 26th, anyone can come back for a free costume even if you didn't get a ticket. And you can join the Hiram Library on Halloween day from 3 to 6.30. We're going to be turning the library into a creepy candy coven for a Hansel and Gretel Halloween. There'll be candy, cookie decorating, a spooky scavenger hunt, and storytelling throughout the afternoon. The Crossroads Library is having a horror movie night for older teens and adults. It's October the 25th at 5 p.m. They're going to be showing a horror movie. There's going to be snacks, drinks, and then if time allows, there's going to be discussion after the film and also a horror movie challenge you can join if you'd like. And then the New Georgia Library is having a faux stained glass class it's for ages 12 and up, and you can sign up either online or in person. So there's going to be two classes, one for homeschool families and the others for anyone else who'd like to join. Each class is going to have two sessions, so you do have to attend both. All material will be provided, and there will be fun fall-themed designs to choose from. All right, thank you, Elizabeth, for all the information. Is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, you can visit WGRLS.org for more information. We wish you a happy October, and we hope to see you at our events. Creepy Classics, a Halloween movie event, will be held on Saturday, October 26th at the Dallas Theater. It's promised to be a fun-filled day of free Halloween movies. No ticket required, and cash concessions will be available. Winner of the prestigious American Comedy Awards Comic of the Year, Etta May, is coming to the Dallas Theater on October 19th at 7 p.m. She is a comedy icon, the reigning queen of Southern sass and performance, full of truth, irony, humor, and wisdom. You can purchase tickets at the Dallas Theater and on their website. The Senior Center has many exciting things coming up, starting with a trip to Trillium Vineyards on October 10th. On October 18th is the trip to Hillcrest Farms in LJ. October 29th, they will be taking a tour of the Hindu Temple in Riverdale. And of course, you can't forget their fun Halloween luncheon on October 25th. Make sure you contact the center to purchase your ticket. For more information, contact the Senior Center at 770-443-8873 or check out their Facebook page. Early voting will begin on October 14th and run through November 1st for the municipal and countywide election. The Paulding County Board of Commissioners meetings for the month will be held on October 8th at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and October 22nd at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. That's what's happening this month on the PC scene. Thanks for joining us and have a spooky October.
We made it into the building. We need to get through that door to get to the Pauline Post studio. But Buzz, the doors are locked. There's no way we'll make it in without being seen. Woody, calm down. Let's just go hide behind the plant and wait for someone to open the door. It's a good idea. Let's go. Say, even if we get to the studio, will Andy see us on Pauline Post? Of course, Woody. Andy loves Pauline Post. Yes, he watches every month. Somebody's coming. toys in the studio? I, I didn't bring them in here. I just found them here, so I figured I'd play with them. You got Buzz, Bo, and Woody. They're all here. What do you mean you didn't put them here? Who put them here? I don't know. Well, get rid of them. We have a show to do. All right. You get Buzz. I'll set these guys Jeez. down here. Hey, everybody. I'm Austin Haygood. And I'm Felicia Wama. And welcome to the October 2019 edition of Pauling Post. We had the privilege of attending the Patriot Day ceremony at Mount Tabor Park on September 11th. This was the 18th anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy and this annual ceremony held in Paulding County remembers the heroes of that day. Thank y'all for coming out here today to our Patriot Day Memorial. I came last year as at the request of Lieutenant Gravit, and uh, this year um, the same. And I plan on being here equally every year that I'm available. And could you tell us why this ceremony is important to you? Being a being a United Airlines pilot and having lost two airplanes um, the day of 9/11, uh, we that hits close to home. But I'm also I grew up in New York City in Queens and. I grew up looking at the World Trade Center and knowing what happened and my family's all up there, uh, followed by having served in the Navy and having served over in the desert at some point. Um, the safety of the country mattered and then later on, having been a pilot, like I said, uh, it, I felt every bit of what the victims went through without having gone through them myself. We will be sitting down each month with county departments to discuss upcoming and ongoing projects in this newest Paulding Post segment, Project Paulding. This month we sat down with George Jones, director of DOT, to talk about a new project that is a safer alternative to traditional traffic lights. We understand you're getting ready to construct a roundabout at the Ridge Road, Bob Hunton Road, Corn Store Road intersection. Yes, we are. We're very excited. This will be the first project in Paulding County of a roundabout that we're actually letting out. So what are the benefits of having a roundabout versus a traffic light? The benefits of a roundabout is that it slows people down. It basically forces you to go from a straight line speed to a curve speed. This roundabout will force everybody to turn right. So your severe crashes um, at a roundabout are much less than at a traffic signal. How is this project being funded? Well, this is actually being funded through the current SPOS program, Felicia. Um, we're very um, excited and we're glad that the folks of this county you know, thought enough of the SPOS program to fund projects like this. What is your expected completion date? 
Um, right now we're looking at 12 months from the signing of the notice to proceed. So we're looking at issuing a notice to proceed to this contractor by the end of this month. So 12 months from October 2019, so sometime late, you know, 2020. Thanks for your time today, George. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, thank you, Felicia. I'd just like to add that, we, you know, we're very, again, we're very excited about this roundabout. We can't wait to get it started, and uh, we're looking forward to deliver this to the folks out there and make everybody's commute safer and more efficient. At the September 19th Board of Commissioners work session, Elections Supervisor Deidre Holden spoke about the changes to our state's voting system. Paulding County will be one of six counties to pilot the new voting system in November. I want to talk about something I'm very excited about, and that's our new voting system. Uh, we will be using this system, of course. We have been selected as a pilot county for the state, one of six. We are the largest. There will be a lot of eyes on us and a lot of people coming in and out to visit to see the system, and we're excited about that. But there again, it's going to be a system that uh, we feel is very voter friendly. It is voter auditable. They can see who they have cast their vote for. They're given an opportunity twice to check their um, selections on the screen. Once they print their ballot, they have another opportunity to make sure they have selected who they so choose to vote for. They deposit it into the scanner and their vote is cast. Many homes in Paulding rely on well water for their household water needs. There are things you need to know if you are a well owner to be sure that your drinking water supply is safe. Testing is the only way to know and can be done through our Paulding County UGA Extension Office. Fees and sampling procedures vary based on the test, so consult with the Extension Office for specific information. Thank you for joining us for this month's edition of Paulding Post. We hope you have a frightfully fabulous Halloween. And don't forget, stay cool Paulding County. Dallas, Mr. Boyd Austin. Thank you. Thank you for not taking that introduction from Facebook. It would have been very different. Uh, <laughs> some days I read things about myself and I wonder who that guy is and how did he get to be in that position. Uh, I'm very excited to be here today. Uh, I did not lose a frog at any point, so I'll let uh, Teresa take that credit. But uh, a number of the things that we talked about, um, as we look moving forward, we wanna, I want to talk today about where the city of Dallas has come and where we are headed. And things are vastly different in a growing community uh, like the city of Dallas. Nothing could be achieved without the support of my council and our great staff. If y'all will, anybody, uh, employees in the council, please stand. You heard all of the council members introduce themselves except Chris Carter. And uh, Chris had surgery yesterday and is unable to be with us, but we have a great team behind us. And everything that we do is a collaborative effort in the city of Dallas, and I couldn't do it without these people and with the dedication that they provide. We hear a lot of times about what people want and what things should be. So today I'm going to kind of take you down a, a path of then and now. And one of my favorite things about saying about success is that success is not a destination. It is a continuous journey towards one's goals. We have to keep moving forward. If we ever stop, we become stale. How many of you lived here in 1999? How many remember when Dallas looked like this? It was a sparse concrete and asphalt area with wooden poles and overhead power lines. This was before the Dallas Theater was reconstructed. There were only a few trees around the old courthouse and there was certainly no place to gather. 
Now look at the stark contrast after 20 years of planning and construction. Dallas is a destination. It has trees, green space, water features, one of my favorite things, and a college in downtown Dallas. It is a place people desire to be. It is a place where businesses can thrive with proper planning. It is a place people want to call their hometown. It is the result of leadership, determination, and a vision for our future. I'm very happy to report that we were recently told that we would be one of the 2020 Plan First communities in the state of Georgia. The letter that accompanied that designation says it recognizes your hard work and successful comprehensive plan implementation and acknowledges your community's commitment to identifying opportunities and setting the goals to move your community forward. We have a plan, we followed it, and we see what the fruits of that plan are becoming. It is significant that we are the first local government in the Northwest Georgia Regional Commission area to be so designated. And that takes into consideration bigger and larger cities like Rome and Dalton and Calhoun and others that often lead the way. Dallas is first in this region. Scripture advises us to build on a solid foundation in a city that is infrastructure, utilities, and transportation. Function is of utmost importance, but form determines the character of the city. And here you see a basic plan of our LCI downtown projects to complete the vernacular of the city of Dallas. Our design vernacular, brick pavers, stone walls, decorative lights, and street trees define the design of our downtown area. Current construction on South Johnson, East and West Spring Streets, Griffin Street, and Park Street are part of that plan, and the, you will see the footprint of the downtown area grow over a number of years. Our next project will be the renovation of Meek Alley. We purchased and demolished the Miller Hardware Building. Removal of this blighted structure will allow us to create at least 22 parking spaces, insert trees and decorative lamps, and open up the rear entrances of the businesses uh, that all the merchants along that area share. It is the redesign of Dallas that has caught the attention of TV and movie producers. We are currently portrayed as Blue Valley, Nebraska, the hometown of the soon to be released series, Stargirl. As a camera ready community, we're on the list for those who choose sites for TV and movie productions. Filming not only provides present value, but can lead to long-term success in tourism and for our merchants. If a show becomes a hit, the people will come to see where it was filmed. Just look at what shows like In the Heat of the Night and The Walking Dead have done for Covington and Sonoy. While we may be known by different names on screen, we want everyone to know that we are Dallas, Georgia, and we are proud of it. Currently, seven gateway signs are under construction at every, uh, all the major entry points to the city. These capture the iconic clock tower of the historic Paulden County Courthouse, which dominates our skyline and at the city logo, defining our history and our high hopes for the future. One of the key components of any plan is public safety. Dallas has consistently been ranked in the top 4% of Georgia's 538 cities as one of the safest cities to live in the state. Sometimes we should be able to move up, but it's the number of police per capita that as we adjust those will help us increase those scores and move us up that list. We're very proud of our police department. I saw Chief Duvall in the back and others, and its use of our resources to keep our citizens and our visitors safe. We have several new tools we are using in the police department. 
Our crime analysis software helps predict crime, where it will be, what kind of crimes, and gives us an ability to be proactive and adjust resources in advance. We also are partnering, partnering with business owners and residents to know who has security cameras, where they are located, and allow us to review footage after an event to help with resolution of an issue. We don't have access to these cameras up front, but we know who they are and where they are, and we can go back later and help fill in the pieces that we may have missed or that somebody may not have seen. In this day and age, criminals can easily move from one city or state to another fairly quickly. As part of our crime deterrence efforts, we have installed 13 flock plate reader cameras at vital entry points, intersections, and in one of our largest subdivisions in the city. It allows us to search for up to 30 days in arrears for vehicles or pedestrians with specific times or dates involved. There was a robbery on October 2nd, and the files are being searched for the vehicle. This vehicle was stolen and was captured on the camera on October the 1st and being recovered. The next one shows a vehicle whose tag was run, and it turned out that the driver had numerous outstanding warrants. The police were able to respond, and this will allow us to take action against those who thwart the law and will let them know we will not tolerate it in Dallas, Georgia. We don't have one yet for texting while driving, but we might work on that. I always talk about infrastructure, and I say when people come, they have to go. And they can't go unless we have proper infrastructure in place. This is an aerial view of our wastewater treatment plant. The plant was built new in 2015 to replace old antiquated structures that we had two other old plants. We thought we might have six to eight years before we started planning for the second phase. Growth has been so tremendous that it has forced us to move that timeline up and we're in the process of uh, enlarging the plant at present. We not only serve the incorporated city limits of Dallas, but we have a huge geographic area in unincorporated Paulding County that we serve as well. Uh, you see here on this slide, we're currently expanding our wastewater treatment plant to treat 3 million gallons a day at a cost of $14.5 million. This expansion was necessi necessitated by 21% growth over the past three years and continued strong growth projections. When we borrowed the money, because we've done all the work to be a water first community, we were able to save 1% on the life of the loan on the interest, saving tens of thousands of dollars a year in interest costs. The next one is since we buy almost all of our water from outside sources, it's important to monitor usage. We must account for every gallon purchased and sold. The iPearl digital meters, the one on the right, uh, provides the customer and us with real-time usage data. This helps locate leaks, saving the city and consumer lots of money. Uh, we lowered system loss by 20% in 2019. That's dollars saved, real dollars for the city and for the consumers. And she's sitting over there, right, wave your hand, Amber. This is Amber Wisner. Amber runs our water section, and she has become a recognized national expert on water use and on the automated metering infrastructure. She's been all over the country to Washington, to California, and all over the state doing a presentation on what the little city of Dallas, Georgia has done to save water and to make these changes and to institute a plan for those changes. And that, good job. And Amber is just typical of all of our employees, the way they dedicate themselves to serving the people of the city. With the smart meter customer portal, one can see actual usage and take steps to repair leaky toilets, 
faucets, etc., or to change habits to conserve water. People call in sometimes and say, we don't use that much water. If they have one of these meters, Amber says, well, at 2 in the morning, somebody's using 60 gallons of water every day. They may not know that the teenager's up taking a shower or something's happening that they're unaware of in their house. This allows them to see the same information we have and to be proactive in saving water, conserving water for Georgia, but also saving money for their household. With more homes being built and a strong economy, we're excited to see many new businesses locating in Dallas to serve our people. Burger King, Wendy's, Ace Hardware, Eliana's Coffee Shop, Fresenius uh, Kidney uh, Dialysis have all opened in the city of Dallas. We also have another a number of folks that are locating in existing structures. Frannick's Cafe, Peace of Heaven Bakery, uh, Eastbound and Grounds, Be Humble Yoga Studio. I hadn't got up the nerve to try that yet. 213 on Main, uh, Homestead, Marketplace, and a number of others. So businesses are locating and thriving in Dallas by providing what the customer demands. My Dallas GA app has been uh, part of our repertoire for a few years. We are updating it and we're making it, giving it a sleeker new look. It will also increase our ability to notify the community faster and to narrow, to narrow those notices to specific neighborhoods or to those most affected. The other great part about this is it will allow Dallas residents to connect with city businesses. And we'll have that opportunity, so we might need to plug that in with the chamber as well. We're excited about uh, the professionalism of our staff. staff. I talked about Amber. Lori Meinberg is here somewhere. Lori, raise your hand. Lori is our assistant city clerk. She helps keep Kendall straight and me as well. Uh, and she received her certified city clerk designation earlier this year. Sandra Lee also received her certificate uh, for internal controls and city finances. And we learned this morning of a retirement that's pending with our assistant police chief, Jimbo Shell. Uh, if you know Jimbo Shell, you know he's always happy and always positive. And we wish him and his family well in his retirement. He will be greatly missed in the city. We want our employees to know they are appreciated. This year marks the seventh year of receiving a wellness grant through our local government uh, risk management services and through our insurance carrier. It encourages good health and has led to no health insurance premium increase for the city of Dallas for two years running. None, nada. Uh, likewise, we encourage good health in the community. 2019 marked the eighth year of our race for a cure. We've made this a part of our Georgia Cities Week celebration each year, and we work in conjunction with the Rotary Club of Paulding County uh, to promote awareness of cancer and to raise funds for the American Cancer Society, and that number grows every year. Um, and I did beat Jim Henson. He was kind of lagging behind when I crossed the finish line. <laughs> Uh, so if we have people running and seeking healthy habits, why not tempt them with a food truck Friday? Uh, I saw this work in other cities. I approached some of our merchants about it. And it has grown into a great tradition in downtown Dallas that's family and pet friendly. Hundreds and thousands of people at times show up for these food truck Fridays and the concerts that go along with them. And it just enhances the fact that Dallas is now a destination for many. Our great Parks and Recreation Department under the leadership of Robbie Bruce has had at other events and attractions. This year we welcome back Caleb Lee Hutchinson for an encore performance of his American Idol experience from last year. Many other local bands nationally and nationally known entertainers have taken the stage to entertain us and the schedule for next year is in the planning at present. All of these elements and more contribute to a great quality of life. Many have moved here believing this is the way it has always been. And that tells, one thing, that tells me one thing, 
that it is working, that our planning has paid off and we continue to build on that plan. For 40 years, the marquee of the uh, Dallas Theater was silent and the building had been closed. Memories had been paved over and life, life had left downtown. Now the glow of neon and the hum of its flashing lights are the heartbeat of a beautiful downtown that attracts new residents, visitors, and Hollywood. You know, a lot of people yearn for the good old days, but the good old days probably were never as good as we think of them in our memory. So we have to live in the here and now. We have to plan for the future. Each generation will have its own recollections of what life was and what it meant to them. But with teamwork, leadership, and determination, and a dedicated vision, a planning process, we can and will create a great future for the city of Dallas. The state of the city of Dallas is good. It's in great financial health. We weathered a storm through the Great Recession. We didn't lay off an employee. We didn't cut a service. We used funds that we had built over time, and today we're beginning to reap the rewards of that persistence and that patience. I thank my council for their willingness to stick with it and to stand by it and to plan ahead and to set aside, to set priorities for our future. The state of the city of Dallas is good. The prospects for our future are even better. Thank you for this opportunity to be with you today. One of the greatest things that will happen uh, in Paulding County. Now you just heard from Paulding County Commission Chairman David Carmichael. And I want to thank uh, Chairman Carmichael and all the commissioners of Paulding County for, and their staff for assisting us in, in every way possible to help make this project move along and get us to this day. I can tell you I can't speak more highly of what Paulding County has done to help us with this project. It's great to feel very welcomed coming into the community with our headquarters anyway. We've been headquartered since inception in Douglas County, so this will be first move in 83 years that we, we move our operation, headquarters operation to Baldwin County. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Teresa Filial, Mayor of the City of Hiram. Proud to be here. I haven't hyperventilated yet, so maybe I'm going to make it. So, I would like to present to you the state of the state of the City of Hiram. Currently serving on the council with me are Mayor Pro Tem Kathy Bookout, Miss Kathy Carter, Mr. Frank Moran, Mr. Jeff Cole, and Mr. Derek Battle. We recently closed out the FY19 budget and have completed adoption of the balanced FY20 budget. In FY19, every department came in under budget, and this is nothing short of a testament to the diligence of our employees. They strive each and every day to provide the City of Hiram with the highest level and quality of service while respecting every dime in which the City is a steward. In Public Works, we welcome two new employees, Timothy Brown and Jacob Richardson. During FY19, our Public Works Department completed a multitude of projects, including Echo Point repaving, Sunny Lane water, lane water line replacement, 
litter pickup with our new LR50 Mad Madvac, over 15,000 gallons was removed from our streets and rights of, rights of way. The new SCADA system implemented, it is now internet based rather than radio. We took ownership of the Hiram Ruiten property. We install new dog playground equipment at Homer Leggett Memorial Park. Currently underway is water line replacement and street improvements on Hunt Street. All while maintaining three parks, five facilities, miles of roadway, and water lines. These guys give Hiram their all each and every day. Our events continue to wear this, wow the citizens of Hiram, Paulding County, and the surrounding areas. Red, white, and boom, Christmas tree lighting, and Old Town Hiram Days. These are just a few of the highlights. Councilman Moran is here to talk about the events going on around our beautiful city. I'd like to start off just by saying that uh, we'd be remiss that, uh, if we didn't mention the great working relationship we have with Paulding County and the city of Dallas. We have a lot of questions with Dallas, and Kendall's always there with an answer. If he doesn't have a right answer for you, he'll make one up for you. But uh, anyway, the um, mayor and the city council continue to work with organizations uh, like your Paulding County uh, Chamber and uh, the Old Town Hiram Business Association to plan community events. We have events at Ben Hill Strickland uh, Memorial Park, uh, we had the Prime of Paul in Red, White, and Boom. Uh, it was again, it was a huge success this year. Uh, the Old Town Hiram Business Association held a summer kickoff event, Freedom Fest, and an Old Town Hiram's Day, all of which were family friendly and free. It's the key word, it's all free for you. Got a lot of, lot of activities for the children, and like some of the uh, parents that I talked to, and being a grandparent myself, that uh, if you've got multiple kids, and you go to an event, you have to pay for different things. It can get kind of expensive for you. So we try to try to eliminate most of that for you. Uh, the Hiram uh, Rosenwald School and Museum hosted a yard sale and a fish fry in September. And this Saturday, they will host Heritage Days. It's a great event. I encourage you to stop by if you've got nothing to do on, if you got uh, out and about on Saturday. We're proud to take part in the Hiram High School home, uh, Homecoming Parade. Uh, that goes through downtown Hiram. It always gets a good crowd. People come out and cheer for the Hiram Hornets. Master gardeners of Paulding County have been so kind as to lend their expertise and their labor to replant the uh, planter boxes we have in front of our businesses on Beatty Street. And October the 8th, we'll be doing our fall slash winter replanting. Um, this past weekend, we hosted a Sounds of the Summer community concert at Ben Hill Strickland Memorial Park. And on October the 12th, there'll be another one featuring lo local groups and talents. Tour de, Tour de Fox bike ride will be coming through the Homer Leggett Park this Saturday. Keep Paulding Beautiful community shred event will take place at the New Seasons Church in Hiram on October the 19th. So if you've got any documents that you need to get rid of, Go to the church, bring the, it's free for you to have your document shredded. Uh, the Rivers Alive cleanup event will be held on the 26th, beginning at Hiram Elementary School. And Hiram's annual Christmas tree lighting will take place on Friday, December the 6th. We've also hosted filming of television series Dwight and Shining Armor and Saints and Sinners. The City Council has also passed an ordinance to define the historic overlay district to preserve, protect, and promote the beauty that is our downtown while we're cre creating uh, new opportunities for development. In addition, uh, following the lead of the cities like Powder Springs, Car Carrollton, and Marietta, we adopted an ordinance which allows you to purchase alcohol from the olive tree and walk around with it downtown during special events that are uh, defined in our defined festivities district. The city has recently taken ownership of the uh, Roartan property. It's the old baseball field there in, in Hiram, right by the water tower. Uh, following the mayor's dream of a family-friendly and accessible playground for our citizens and visitors, we've already begun reconstituting a baseball field to host the uh, Paulding County Alternative Baseball League. Uh, if you've never been to one of their uh, 
baseball games, it's really a good time. We participated in it last year and the year before. It's really a great, uh, great program. We're also working on a plan to connect Roratan Park, Ben Hill Strickland Memorial Park, Homer Leggett Park, the Hiram Town Dog Park, and the Silver Comet Trail. With over 600,000 people using the Silver Comet Trail every year, we want to get everybody off the trail and into downtown Hiram and see what we've got to offer. To that end, uh, we're always looking for developers that have got uh, a vision and money. Uh, <laughs> we've got... Uh, the city of Hiram owns 12 acres of land on the other side of the railroad tracks, and we're open for business, so if anybody's got uh, a vision and some cash, come and talk to us and see what we can do. Thank you. Chief? Our council chambers and court facility found their forever home in the municipal annex, formerly known as the community center. Newly renovated and improved to include an executive session room and judges' chambers. The facility is no longer a rental space. We celebrated this occasion with the ribbon cutting reception in January. In 2019, court administrator and chief clerk Jason James celebrated nine years of service at Hiram. Last October, he attained the Master Certificate of Court Administration from the Georgia Council of Court administrators and excuse me this september served as co-emc for the 2019 gcca file conference deputy clerk landy maupin celebrated six years of service and will retire in january of 2020 last month court clerk dylan lara celebrated his second anniversary with hiram court Clerk Sally Goulardi started her career with Hiram in September. Previously, she served three years as a court clerk in Fort Oglethorpe, uh, Oglethorpe, Georgia. In an ongoing mission to build a public trust and confidence in the court through administrative efficiency and transparency, court services finished FY 2019 $73,000 under budget. That is 16% of the entire court's budget. This could not be accomplished without great partnerships with our police department, Paulding County Sheriff's Office, Paulding County Jail, Paulding County District Attorney, Paulding County Superior, Magistrate, Probate, and Juvenile Court staffs. We are very fortunate to have great relationships with our local stakeholders. Of note, do not text and drive in Hiram. Since the passing of hands-free, <laughs> since the passing of hands-free Georgia, Hiram officers have handed out over 700 violations. That shows you how many people just disregard the law. In administration, they sure have been busy. They selected and implemented a new financial software. This endeavor was quite the undertaking, requiring them to develop an RFP, review and analyze responses, organize demos, and carefully select the right one for Hiram. Then came coordinating with their IT vendor, scheduling training, conversion, implementation, all this before we go live, while maintaining their day-to-day -day duties. Thank you for a job well done. In January, administration welcomed a new part-time records clerk, Elizabeth Porner. Under the direction of city clerk, Melissa Cheswood, she is in charge of in inventorying city records and maintaining adherence to the adopted retention ske re schedule. Round one of records destruction included destruction of over 200 boxes of records. Longtime customer service clerk Marilyn Everett left Hiram in June to pursue other opportunities, and we welcomed Leilani Luce to the front office. Melissa graduated in May from Pauling Chambers Leadership Pauling Class 29, the best class. We hear that all the time. In fact, she has a banner as you walk into City Hall that it was the best class. So, sorry, 30. You're going to have to really step it up to beat 29. 
An occupation tax and permits clerk, Jennifer Prater, is currently part of leadership piling class 30. <laughs> Camp Hornet celebrated its ninth successful summer once again under the direction of Kathy Stancil and her incredible crew, including four counselors in training, which allows campers to transition into leadership roles at camp. We had 50 campers going on field trips to Big Air, Rome Braves Game, Lake Point Station, Seven Springs Water Park, The Movies, Stars and Strikes, Sparkles, Telus uh, Science Museum, Monster Mini Golf, and many of the beautiful Paulding County Parks. Hiram boasts over 700 active businesses, welcome, welcoming over 100 new businesses in the last year including Shaw Stainless, Wild Crab, Big Air Hiram, and soon to be Thrasher Coffee. Jennifer works tirelessly to provide excellent customer service to our business owners while maintaining organization and without sacrificing compliance. And last but certainly not least, Chief Sailors is here to t today to tell you about what's happening in the police department. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for giving me this opportunity. She asked me to talk about my favorite subject today, which is our own police department, so this makes it a little easier. Um, we're, not a, we're a service organization. As uh, cities and counties, we don't sell any product. We don't make anything. Our people are our products. So throughout this, uh, my part of the presentation, I'm going to show you some of our products that I'm very proud of. Um, I think it's important for us to cultivate, to train, and to recognize our people. Happy people produce good things. Um, as you can see here, uh, 2019 Paulding Rotary Club Officer of the Year, Trenton Benson, and the 2019 Paulding County Chamber of Commerce Officer of the Year, Corey Johnson. I always like to include the kids in there with it because they're the most important. I'd like to talk about something that we started this year. Uh, it's the Hiram Police Community Alliance. Um, it, several things make up the Community Alliance. Uh, it consists of the Citizens Police Academy, a Pastors Alliance, women's self-defense classes, um, church safety classes, firearm safety classes, and other community events. It, we, we realize as a police department that it's our job to uh, enforce the laws, to detect and prevent crime. But we also see ourselves as a community partner. And that's why I enjoy these events so much, because it helps us understand that the, there's a bigger picture out there than what we see on a daily basis. So as a community partner, it's important for us to reach out to the community. We shouldn't wait for people to call us and seek partnerships. So that's what we're doing through this community alliance. And I'm going to like to show you some of the pictures uh, of some of the things we've done. Because without the community, we can't solve crimes. No matter how good we are, no matter how smart we are, we can't do it without you. Uh, this is uh, pictures from our Citizens Police Academy. Uh, so it was an 11-week program where they were exposed to different things. Uh, we didn't shoot them with a taser or anything, against my better judgment. But um, we taught them about every aspect of the police department that we could, about the, the court system, about crime scene investigations. Um, the sheriff's office also sent us their crime scene tech. Uh, so through these partnerships, they, they've helped us, and we appreciate it very much. Um, but we taught them about the explorers and everything there that we could about the police department. We tried to expose them to that. We also allow them to do ride-alongs with day shift and night shift, so they get to see firsthand what it's like out there on the street, on the mean streets of Hiram. Um, we started the Pastors Alliance this year, and it's something I'm very proud of. I can't take credit for it. Uh, I worked in Carrollton for almost 20 years, and the chief of police there is an awesome man, very smart man. So I've, I've always been taught, learn from the smartest. So I borrowed from him. And we started what they started in Carrollton many years ago as a Pastors Alliance. There's many times where people may not tell the police certain things, but they'll tell their pastors. So we reached out to the pastors and we get together and try to solve the community's problems together. Because why should we, we be working, uh, doing different things when we could work together and get things done at the same time? So we've met a couple of times. Uh, our partnership 
Sheriff Gary Gulledge and uh, Chief Marshal Trevor Hess and Chief du Duvall from Dallas PD and their people have taken part with us and we appreciate these partnerships and I think we've got a good thing going. Uh, our city clerk bet me I couldn't get a picture of our city manager up here, but here we are. Um, we took part this time in the uh, 2019 Paulding County Law Enforcement Memorial, and I put, put this picture up here for a reason, because there's a lot of unsung heroes, and he's one of them, and our city council come out and support us, and we appreciate that very much. Uh, the guy in the dress, I mean the kilt, is our Sergeant Edwin Ivey, uh, so I always like to throw a couple of pictures in there as, as I can. And you're welcome, sir. <laughs> um, this, going back to our employees being our products, we had several promotions this year. Um, a lot of times it, it is difficult to do promotions, but for me it's been very easy. We, we have a lot of good people at the police department. And there were many pictures we took during the ceremonies, but I included these specific pi pictures for a reason, because the most imp important people are surrounding them on the left picture is family. Family should come first. Um, Deputy Chief Lonergan's with us today. He was a lieutenant. He had taken charge of the police department before I got here. He's done a great job. Uh, he was promoted to Deputy Chief. And that's his family. That's his beautiful family there. Um, our other family, besides our police family, is our mayor and city council. That's why I wanted to include those pictures as well, because it's extremely important to have that partnership and relationship. And we've got a really good one going here at Hiram. Here are some of the other pictures, and I've been told this is Officer January and Officer February. I'm not really sure where that comes from, uh, but they're the best-looking ones at the police department, evidently. It made me feel bad, but uh, as you can see uh, on the left, Officer Benson was promoted to sergeant. That's his father pinning his badge on for him, and Sergeant Crossan was promoted to lieutenant, and that's his wife pinning his badge on him. As you can see, the, the middle picture is the mayor and the city council. Last but not least, uh, we received a grant from Norfolk Southern this year for $3,000, and we're able to buy some much needed equipment. And I think that's the last photo, it is. And thank you for allowing us to come up here and talk about this, and thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you for coming here today for the State of the City's address. I would like to thank Councilman Moran and Chief Jamie Sailors for their willingness to participate in this discussion. I was impressed with the way the county did their address by including additional members in their, pre in their presentation and I'm grateful we were able to do so as well. There is a lot going on in the city of in the city and they are as involved as I am and I thank them for being willing to step up and share their input. I would also like to recognize some of our home family who are here in support of us today and every day. Councilman Jeff Cole, City Manager Jody Palmer, Deputy Chief Josh Lonergan, Sheila Kendall, Kathy Stansel, Jennifer Prater, City Clerk Melissa Chosewood, and City Attorney Jason Phillips. This is my last State of the City's address as mayor. I appreciate your support over the last four years. I have truly loved serving as mayor. I am looking forward to stepping back into the role of council person in January. I hope you are all as excited as we are about this great place we call home. Thank you very much.
on today's tour, we're going to go to three different places. We're going to go to see the dam that's under construction. Then we're going to go to the reservoir intake and pump station. And then we're going to come back here and see the plant. So you'll be able to see all of those different components. If you've traveled along Highway 61 over the last year, you're well aware of the pipeline. And I'm happy to say that that pipeline is finally off of Highway 61. So traffic is back to normal there. We, we thank you for your patience uh, during that entire period. This is the dam that's under construction and the reservoir is actually going to be going back this direction. So when we drove down that hill, you would have entered the water at that point and um, it's going to be a lake from this point back. We're standing right now at uh, an elevation of about 8, 895. The normal water surface level will be 910. So we will be in, there'll be 15 feet of water above us when the, when the dam is full. So if you turn around and look, you can imagine everything at our level back, all the way back to the far tree line will be, will be covered in water. Now you see a bunch of trees are still there, you'll notice. We did that on purpose. We wanted to wait to clear the whole pool of the reservoir until we're right about to fill it. Because if not, um, every time it would rain, we'd have to deal with 300 acres of of uncovered material. So we tried to limit the clearing initially um, to the area that's needed. So the dam itself, you can see it's an earthen dam. It uses about 2.5 million cubic yards of soil. So a typical dump truck holds about 10 yards. So if we had to bring this material in from, the, from off site, it would have been about 250,000 dump trucks worth of soil. So luckily, they're able to use borrow areas on site and use that material here. So we're not having to bring any of that traffic out, out onto 61. Um, the dam itself has a concrete core to it, a wall that runs down the center to prevent water from seeping through. And then additionally, in the bedrock below, grout was injected down 80 feet below the dam to prevent water from traveling under it. So there's a solid grout and concrete core that prevents water from seeping through. And then the rest of it is earth on top of that. The base of the dam is about 825 feet and it's about 4,000 feet long when it's, when it's all in place. You'll see that structure out in the center, that tall concrete column, and then the, the two other concrete structures. There will ultimately be a bridge out to that center column and that column will be used as an emergency overflow in case too much water gets into the, into the reservoir, it would flow through there and through a 60 inch diameter outlet pipe that goes downstream into Richland Creek. Now when we, we created this, we basically dammed up Richland Creek, which means Richland continues. So if we were to trap all of the water, it would dry up the creek downstream. So we actually use that outlet structure to release small quantities of water to keep the stream going downstream. I mentioned all the water coming in here is pumped up, but we recognize some of that we're going to have to release from there to go downstream. And the permit has certain requirements for temperature and water quality. So we have certain levels within that structure we can pull water off of. If we pull from too deep, it may be too cold so we can bring it up, up, closer, up closer to the surface. Um, right now they've placed about 200 and, what'd you say, 2200, I'm sorry, 2.2 million cubic yards of soil. They've got about 300,000 yards left to go. On a good day, they can do 14,000 yards. So we're within a month, hopefully, if the weather is good, um, to be able to get it done. And believe it or not, these, today is not an ideal situation because when they place the soil, it has to have a certain moisture content. And one thing you notice today, it's dry. So the best situation is if it's raining like every third day for about a half of an inch. That keeps the, so the soil moist enough um, to where they can do the work. What they have to do now is they have to spend a lot of time conditioning the soil and you'll see water trucks. A lot of them are on, br on lunch right now, but they have to constantly spray water out here to keep it the right moisture content or else it gets really dry like we've seen. And the flip side of that is we don't want it to be too wet because then they can't get the right compaction either. And this entire fall and spring from like September through March, they got very little placement done because if you recall, we were getting rain after rain after rain and it was, it was just too wet. Um, so they're making a lot of progress. We're anticipating within the next month, month and a half, they'll be able to top it out 
and um, then they have to get all the grass established, wave protection, get everything ready to go, and then we'll be able to close the gate off and block Richland Creek and be ready to start bringing water in. The, the schedule for bringing water in is not until the fall time frame. That's when the pump station will be done on the Etowah. We'll start bringing water in and we'll fill it up at different levels. Um, because it's an earthen dam, the state really regulates how quickly we fill the dam. We can fill the first 30 feet of it as quickly as possible. So we could do that in probably three weeks. The next 30 feet, we can only do two feet per week. So that'll take about 15 weeks. And then the final 30 feet, because it's about a 90 foot depth, that has to be one foot per week. So that'll take 30 weeks. So from the time we start filling until it reaches its full pool, we're looking to close to a year to be able to fill it that entire distance. The whole time the, state's, the state monitors the dam. This is a class one dam, which is the highest level, similar to Alatoona Dam or, or Lake Lanier. Um, this is the highest level dam that the state has, so it's very highly monitored. We couldn't ever allow trees or anything to grow on that. The public's not supposed to be on it, um, that, that type of thing. Um, so the, the county ultimately will be responsible for maintaining the, the lake, both from the water um, supply standpoint, but then also from a recreation standpoint. Um, the county owns the entire property around the lake, and part of the requirement is to have a 150-foot um, undisturbed buffer. So if you're out on the lake, you're not going to be able to see homes right up on it. People aren't going to be able to develop because the county owns the entire, the entire area. And here we, we will have uh, different levels that we can actually pull water from the reservoir so that as the reservoir drops, if we're in a drought situation and the level drops, we'll be able to keep pulling water from lower and lower. Uh, when we get up here to this structure and as you walk across this bridge, this is kind of open, so it'll kind of be, it'll feel high. But when the reservoir is full, we'll be about 12 feet above the water level. And the pumps that we see in here, they're vertical turbine pumps, but they're about, I think 88, 87 feet deep. So they're, they're really, really long. But we'll see all that as we walk across. So y'all are welcome to come on across the scary bridge. Uh, and each one of these pumps can pump up to 9 million gallons a day. Uh, and we, of course, have three in, so there's 27 million gallons a day of flow possible going up to the, to the plant. The total amount that we can actually pump from the river, if the level is up at a high flow, we can go 45 million gallons a day to fill the reservoir. Uh, the initial size of the plan is going to be 18 million gallons a day, so an instantaneous flow of 45, you know, you can do your total day flow in less than a day, obviously, just by pumping faster. Uh, in the future, as we go to a higher flow rate, we have some additional spaces here to put more pumps, and we'll basically just mirror this, put two more in there. We'll have a total of five pumps in this building. As, as Russell said, we're pumping water from about a mile, that last mile we drove, along the roadway, and the pipeline comes up into the front of this building here, and this is where the main treatment process happens. Um, at the far end of the building, we add a coagulant, a chemical that basically destabilizes the water and takes all of the particles that are within the water and causes them to come together and start to form larger particles. Then passes into a zone um, that's called DAF or dissolved air flotation, we actually inject tons of air into the water. The air attaches itself to those particles and float all those particles to the surface. And it creates a mat of solids of everything that was in the water. And that goes off to waste into that um, thickener. And the clean water comes here and goes into the filters. And so these will be dual media filters. It'll be sand and anthracite. And the water passes through, you know, five feet of that media and it pulls out any of the microscopic organisms that are within the water and it comes out basically purified or cleaned and then from here it goes downstream and you can see those large blue tanks those actually have granular activated carbon or GAC so the same type of thing you would have like in a Brita filter um, these are very large Brita filters so the water pumps through those um, it further cleans the water and then it goes by gravity down 
chlorine is added to disinfect it and it goes into that large white tank at the bottom. It's called a clear well and that'll store about six million gallons of water. Paulding County, if you recall, I said uses about 12 million a day. So you guys are using two of those tanks a day worth of water. So we have some contact time to allow the chlorine to contact the water and then it gets pumped that 13 miles down um, to the uh, two, Highway 278 where it gets into the distribution system. Um, there's a bunch of support activities to help that process happen. Uh, I said the solids go down there in that thickener. It basically raises the concentration of that sludge. It then gets pumped into that building that has a high-speed centrifuge, which is like a very, very fancy washing machine that, that, uh, that basically spins the solids and removes the liquid. So what comes out of it is basically um, like dirt material, and then that gets disposed of. The building over there has all the chemicals that are used in the process, that coagulant I talked about, sodium hypochlorite, which is like a bleach that's used for, for chlorine, as well as fluoride for, for uh, tooth protection, uh, dental protection, and then those large tanks on the outside are actually lime. That's used for corrosion control and to raise the pH of the finished water um, going out in the system. I always laugh about bottled water because they try and do all these marketing ploys, right, about alkaline water. And, you know, we've been adding alkalinity for years to tap water, but now they, they, they do it and they call it, uh, they charge it extra $2 a gallon, but anyhow. So don't get me started on that. So the water goes out in the distribution system. The facility has to be manned 24 hours a day. So there'll be a staff of about 12 people because you have to have multiple shifts. At a minimum, there'll always be two people on here at all times. Um, the building directly, Across from us, you'll see when you leave, is an admin building. So there we have a laboratory where they do um, water quality monitoring. We have uh, admin offices. We have locker rooms. We have a break room and a, and a space, uh, as well as a control room where they uh, basically can control everything. I talk about bottled water. One of the benefits of tap water is that throughout this treatment process, there are online sensors that look at the water quality continuously all the way through the process. So if something's going wrong in the DAF unit, we would know it before it hit the filters. If something went wrong with the filters, we would know it before it hits the GAC. So there's all sorts of monitoring that has to happen continuously, real time around the clock. Bottled water, it's completely opposite. They're, they're regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. They do periodic checks. So they'll run you know, a month's worth of production and then they'll do a check. And if something goes wrong, then they have to do a recall. And that's why you always see recall for chicken and stuff, because it's totally different regulations. So you should feel confident that the water that you're getting, every drop of it is monitored real time throughout the entire process. Um, and the, the treatment process we're using here is very similar to the process that's used by Cobb County Marietta Water Authority. So you can expect a very, very identical water quality to what you have now. It'll actually be better because you'll be closer to the source now. You won't have as, as high of a water age as you had previously with, with Cobb Marietta Water Authority. Um, I'm Ashley Gulick and I want you to join me today as we explore more of Paulding County, Georgia. Today we are heading out to a hidden gem here in Dallas, Georgia, High Shoals Falls. High Shoals Falls is located at 2184 High Shoals Road in Dallas, Georgia, and although it may not be as well known as some of the areas we have explored here in Paulding County, it will definitely become a stop you will want to make over the summer. Also, there is no cost to visit. So grab a picnic and your beach towels and come join me as we head out to unwind at High Shoals Falls. If you are looking for another fun and relaxing place to visit and get outdoors in Paulding County, then hop on 61 North and make a stop at High Shoals Falls. This beautiful hidden jewel is known to locals, but those that have never traveled the area probably never stop by High Shoals. 
An easy to access trail leads you to the falls where you can spend a summer afternoon swimming and wading in the pool beneath the cascading waterfall. This is an ideal and perfect place to bring the family for a hot summer afternoon. The pool area is not deep, but please remember water safety when visiting or swimming. Because it is a small area, prepare to come early as the falls can get crowded on the weekends. It is a popular place for locals to hang out and space fills up quickly. There is a picnic area available if you want to bring lunch and spend the afternoon here at the falls. Also, make sure to look around the historic cemetery as you enter the falls and maybe stop and ask a local visitor about the folklore surrounding the area. Today we learned that High Shoal should definitely be added to your bucket list of places to visit here in Paulding County. With the summer heat definitely upon us, start planning your day trip to High Shoals to cool off while waiting in the waters beneath the beautiful falls. Thanks again for tuning in today and be sure to join me next time as we find more places in Paulding County to explore, unwind, and thrive. It's incredible, you know, uh, just being here, thinking back to being here for my hometown visit and everything, uh, getting to play on the same stage, same place. Uh, but this time, you know, it's it's not uh, for the American Idol thing. People are coming out uh, to support me, you know, apart from that, which means the world to me that people are coming out and buying tickets and everything. And it's, it's really just a super humbling thing that everybody's come out to this supporting me. Oh, I, you know, I have countless memories at, uh, at South Paulden High. Um, you know, I, I participated in the talent competition every year. I remember my freshman year, I got second. My sophomore year, I got third. My, and then my junior year, I didn't place. And I was like, man, I'm getting worse. Uh, but then I won my senior year. Praise be to God. Um, you know, I've had so many teachers that were huge influences on me. Uh, I know uh, I had Mr. Jason Bryce. Uh, who now teaches at Paulden County, but he was my drama teacher and he got me, uh, he, you know, I really think he, just him made me a lot more comfortable on a stage goofing around and stuff and kind of helped me uh, come out of my shell even more with people staring at me. Uh, there, but there's plenty of teachers that I love, uh, you know, Miss Norman, a bunch of them, Miss Wright. Man, Paulden. It's just that's just where I'm from, man. I've been here my whole life. I go to church here. It's 
it's uh, it's what I've always been a part of. I know uh, it's it's really crazy growing up here, and you know to it's it's weird, man. It's weird being here and and being invited to come sing for all these folks that have been my neighbors. You know, it's but it's a really humbling thing. It's been an awesome place to grow up, and, and it's still my home. Hello, I'm Ashley Gulick, and I want you to please join me while I explore Paulding County, Georgia. Today, we are headed to explore Larry C. Ragsdale White Oak Park. White Oak is located off of Highway 61 South at 298 Mustang Drive in Dallas, Georgia. The park has been in operation for roughly 12 years and boasts 92 acres of area just waiting for you to come out and enjoy and explore. The park is open from dawn until dusk, seven days a week, so let's go check it out. A vast array of Georgia's and local nature can be seen all throughout the park, making it one of the best places for you to get out and enjoy the outdoors here in Paulding County. The park's green space is perfect for an afternoon picnic, kite flying, watching birds, or getting out to play catch with the kids. The park is usually filled with visitors, especially on the weekends, as it is one of the county's most popular stops. Educational opportunities abound in nature and White Oak is a great place to enhance your knowledge of the great outdoors. There's a fully paved mile and a half walking trail available for all fitness levels to enjoy and it's the perfect place to enjoy the beautiful park scenery. Who wouldn't love taking in nature while getting a little exercise? Walking is also one of the simplest ways to get and stay active and this easy to access trail is the perfect place for that. There is a trail fitness system around the track if you are looking to up your workout or to build strength and flexibility while getting in a cardio session. But no worries, the trail is perfect for those who are just out for an afternoon stroll or getting some fresh air. White Oak is also home to two playgrounds that cater to children of all ages. Play benefits children in so many important ways, so let's take a look at what type of fun the playgrounds here have to offer. If you are looking for different fitness activities or just fun in general, come out and enjoy the park's 16-hole disc golf course. The sport is rapidly gaining in popularity, so White Oak is a great place to come practice your skills. The course starts directly behind the playground and there are plans to add two more holes in the future. Whether a pro or just looking for something new to try, this disc golf course is perfect for a day of fun at this beautiful park. Hey, let's see if I can make this shot. There are also volleyball courts available here at White Oak. Get your friends together and come out to the park for a friendly match. The courts are first come, first serve, so get here early and enjoy a fun and competitive game or two. Three lakes are available for anyone interested in a morning or afternoon of leisurely fishing. Each lake hosts a variety of bass, brim, and catfish, so bring your fishing poles and gear next time you are in the area. The lakes are a perfect area for fishermen of all ages and experience. White Oak has beautiful pavilions available for rental as well. There are five open pavilions, two enclosed pavilions, and picnic areas with grills that are perfect for your next birthday party, reception, or even family get-togethers. For pricing and availability, please call the Paulding County Parks and Recreation Department for more information and details. So, today we learned that White Oak Park is the perfect place to get outdoors and explore, whether it be on the trails, fishing at the lake, or just taking in nature in the vast green space. So, be sure to make White Oak a priority on your next stop here in the county. Thank you again for joining me today, and we will see you next time to explore more of Paulding County, Georgia.
So Tina, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about the first recipe that we're going to be making? Absolutely. We're going to be doing a spinach artichoke yogurt dip. You know, you go to a party, you're talking to your friends, you're having a good time, and you're just dipping into the dip. Most of your ordinary dips are full of mayonnaise or sour cream, things that are high in fat. The good thing about um, Greek yogurt is high in protein and low in fat. So you're getting good nutrition. Add that to some vegetables and you've got a great dip for vegetables, crackers, whatever, and it's low calorie. It's basically 92 calories a serving. Sounds great. So let's get to making it. Absolutely. So Ashley, to start with, we're going to use one, you can use either a box or bag of frozen chopped spinach. You want to thaw it first and squeeze out all the water. So we've got our spinach already in our bowl. The next we're going to add is one 12 ounce jar of artichoke hearts and you want to go ahead and drain them as well and chop them. And I love so we artichoke add, hearts. Oh, artichoke hearts are very, very healthy and I think a lot of folks don't realize that. I've got mine chopped kind of big, but you can chop them up finer if you want. Um, that's totally a personal preference. All right, so then the next thing is that awesome Greek yogurt. We've got one cup of fat-free plain Greek yogurt. That's and be such sure a good to substitute. it is, and be sure that you do check and make sure it's Greek. The biggest thing is Greek is smoother and it has more protein than other yogurts. And then we do use cream cheese, but we use the fat-free cream cheese. So it's only a quarter cup of fat cream fat-free cream cheese. And sometimes if you leave it setting out a little bit, it gives it more of an okay. opportunity to soften up. And then we've got a quarter cup of Parmesan. Now this is shredded Parmesan, but you can use grated. It would be, again, less chunky. But again, okay. it's a personal preference. I like the, the, um, the shredded. I and I love the taste better. of shredded Parmesan. I do. And I like my dips chunkier, you know, and again, it's a, it's a personal preference, but I do like them a little bit chunkier. And then this is two um, teaspoons of Dijon mustard. You could use regular mustard. You okay. could use the spicy brown mustard. It just gives it a little bit of, you know, um, a little bit of a kick. Okay. All right. And then fresh dill. Now this is about um, one tablespoon of fresh dill. And uh, dill just gives things such a, a fresh, fresh flavor. I love the smell of yeah. fresh dill. It is awesome. So mix, I'm mixing it up as I go just so that, you know, I'm not having to mix everything at the uh, end and also it gives that cream cheese a chance to mix up in there. All right, then one teaspoon of minced onion okay, and it can be dried. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the salt in. It's about a quarter teaspoon okay. of kosher salt. Okay. And then the very last thing is some garlic powder and it's also a quarter teaspoon. And again, after you put everything in and you mix it up, you can taste it and adjust things to taste. Okay. You can add a little pepper in there. If you want it a little hotter, you could even put a little bit of, uh, you know, cayenne pepper or something okay. in there. And we just mix it all up really good. It looks really delicious. It looks so good. And it smells really good too. So then we would take this and put it in the fridge and let it chill for a couple hours. That'll okay. get it kind of, um, you know, uh, the, a chance for all the flavors okay. to mix up. And when it comes out of the refrigerator, it looks something like this. You also can chop some more dill um, on top and just kind of make it okay. look pretty. You can use, we've got carrots. You can use carrots, broccoli, celery, uh, cucumbers, even little tomatoes. And then, of course, crackers, tortilla okay. chips, all that to dip it with. So let's try it and see how it turned out. Absolutely. Best part of it. Mm -hmm. mm. That is spot on. Very good. So I hope you guys like this. Um, I think it's going to be a really good addition to your party and a good healthy alternative to high fat foods. I'm Ashley Gulick, and I want you to join me as we explore the Silver Comet Trail here in Paulding County, Georgia. Today we are at the Rambo Road Trailhead, which is at mile marker 22.2 on the Silver Comet Trail and located just off of Highway 278 in Dallas, Georgia. The Rambo Road Trailhead is at mile marker 22.2 on the Silver Comet Trail. 
This trailhead has paved parking, a restroom, picnic tables, and is 0.7 miles east of the Pumpkin Vine Trestle. This trailhead is the perfect location and stop if you are looking to take a ride or walk to some of the most scenic views on the Silver Comet Trail here in Paulding County. Head out to mile marker 23 west of the Rambo Trailhead and be sure to check out the picturesque Pumpkin Vine Trestle while out on your ride or walk along the Silver Comet Trail. Built in 1901, the trestle was over 750 feet in length and rested 126 feet overlooking Pumpkin Vine Creek. According to the history books on the trestle, Ol 88 or Engine 345 jumped the tracks on October 18, 1903, tearing down part of the bridge. The trestle was restored to its current state in 1999 and made available for use on the Silver Comet in 2000. Another scenic spot to check out on the trail is the Brushy Mountain Tunnel. Located at mile 30.9 and about 6 miles east of Rockmart, the tunnel is accessible if you take the Silver Comet Trail west of the Rambo Trailhead. The 730-foot tunnel was originally constructed in 1904 by the Atlanta and Birmingham Airline Railway, which was a subsidiary of the Seaboard Airline Railway. The tunnel was abandoned in 1988 by CSX, but now serves as a famous landmark on the Paulding County section of the Silver Comet Trail. And now we are going to toss it over to Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Department to talk to you about safety on the trail. Hello, I'm Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Office. I'm here today to give you some information to help keep you safe while you're on the Silver Comet Trail. We are constantly monitoring the trail. There are 21 camera locations between the Hiram Trailhead at the caboose and the Terra Drummond Trailhead. Deputies and dispatchers can monitor the trail via tablets to help maintain your safety. Our deputies patrol the Silver Comet Trail every day from dawn until dusk in smart cars, bicycles, ATVs, motorcycles, and UTVs. With that being said, there are still things you can do to make your experience on the Silver Comet Trail a much safer one. While visiting the trail, here are a few good safety tips that you can think about. If you have an emergency, always remember to dial 911. Please remember to describe your approximate location on the Silver Comet Trail by several things. Make sure you watch for and know the closest mile marker to you. Remember the name of the last trailhead you passed. Remember the name of the trailhead or the location where you parked. And remember whether or not you traveled east or west on the trail and approximately how far you've traveled. Remember to use the buddy system. Never go on the Silver Comet Trail alone. And you can always bring self-protection. If you have a Georgia weapons carry license, you can legally carry a firearm on the Silver Comet Trail. And remember, some of the areas on the trail are very remote, and even sections near populated areas can be isolated. So lock your car and make sure your valuables are in the trunk. Keep everything out of sight, such as cell phones, GPS units, iPods, laptops, wallets, pocketbooks, backpacks. Never leave anything in your vehicle, and never leave your vehicle in a trailhead parking spot overnight. And also, remember to enjoy the beautiful trail that we have in Paulding County, Georgia. So, today we learned that the Rambo Road Trailhead is the perfect location to enter the trail and enjoy some of Paulding County's most scenic areas. So, be sure to make it down to this part of the trail on your next ride. Thanks for joining me today and be sure to tune in next time as we explore, unwind, and thrive here in Paulding County, Georgia. I'm Ashley Gulick and I want you to join me as we explore the Silver Comet Trail here in Paulding County, Georgia. The Terra Drummond Trailhead is in the city of Dallas in Paulding County, Georgia and is located at the intersection of Seaboard Drive and Highway 278. Ample parking is available and adjacent to the trail for easy access. This stop also has restrooms, water, benches, paved parking, and a large fountain. The Paulding County Government Complex and Veterans Park is located just a short walk or ride away from this trailhead and has a sidewalk available for easy access. 
The historic city of Dallas is also located just a short distance from the trail, so be sure to plan a day to visit the scenic downtown area while you are here. This beautiful trailhead is dedicated to Tara Drummond, who tragically lost her life in a weapons training incident during a law enforcement training exercise on September 13, 2005. This park is a dedication and memorial to remember and reflect on her life and impact she made in the community. For more information on this park, how to purchase memory bricks, or donate to the park's maintenance, please visit the Tara Drummond Park website. And now we are going to toss it over to Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Department to talk to you about safety on the trail. Hello, I'm Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Office. I'm here today to give you some information to help keep you safe while you're on the Silver Comet Trail. We are constantly monitoring the trail. There are 21 camera locations between the Hiram Trailhead at the caboose and the Terra Drummond Trailhead. Deputies and dispatchers can monitor the trail via tablets to help maintain your safety. Our deputies patrol the Silver Comet Trail every day from dawn until dusk in smart cars, bicycles, ATVs, motorcycles, and UTVs. With that being said, there are still things you can do to make your experience on the Silver Comet Trail a much safer one. While visiting the trail, here are a few good safety tips that you can think about. If you have an emergency, always remember to dial 911. Please remember to describe your approximate location on the Silver Comet Trail by several things. Make sure you watch for and know the closest mile marker to you. Remember the name of the last trailhead you passed. Remember the name of the trailhead or the location where you parked. And remember whether or not you traveled east or west on the trail and approximately how far you've traveled. Remember to use the buddy system. Never go on the Silver Comet Trail alone. And you can always bring self-protection. If you have a Georgia weapons carry license, you can legally carry a firearm on the Silver Comet Trail. And remember, some of the areas on the trail are very remote, and even sections near populated areas can be isolated. So lock your car and make sure your valuables are in the trunk. Keep everything out of sight, such as cell phones, GPS units, iPods, laptops, wallets, pocketbooks, backpacks. Never leave anything in your vehicle, and never leave your vehicle in a trailhead parking spot overnight. And also, remember to enjoy the beautiful trail that we have in Paulding County, Georgia. Today we learned that the Terra Drummond Trailhead and Park is an easy entry point for you to access the Silver Comet Trail. This access point puts you at a perfect location to either travel from Paulding to Polk or Cobb counties while enjoying some of Paulding County scenery. We also learned that a stop at this trailhead gives you easy access to the Paulding County Government Complex and historic downtown Dallas. So, please join me next time as we find more places for you to explore, unwind, and thrive here in Paulding County, Georgia. I'm Ashley Gulick and I want you to join me as we explore the Silver Comet Trail here in Paulding County, Georgia. The Dallas Trailhead is at mile marker 19.4 on the Silver Comet Trail and parking is available directly behind the Dallas Chamber of Commerce. The walkway to the trail is located adjacent to the parking area, but please note that the access walkway is steep. Amenities at the trailhead include a restroom and picnic tables. Looking for shopping or getting in a bite to eat before or after your walk or ride? There are plenty of shops, a grocery store, and several restaurants located just a short distance from the Paulding Chamber. There is a sidewalk that leads to the shops and stores so, access to this area is just a short walk or ride away. And now we are going to toss it over to Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Department to talk to you about safety on the trail. Hello, I'm Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Office. I'm here today to give you some information to help keep you safe while you're on the Silver Comet Trail. We are constantly monitoring the trail. There are 21 camera locations between the Hiram Trailhead at the caboose and the Terra Drummond Trailhead. Deputies and dispatchers can monitor the trail via tablets to help maintain your safety. Our deputies patrol the Silver Comet Trail every day from dawn until dusk in smart cars, bicycles, ATVs, motorcycles, and UTVs. 
With that being said, there are still things you can do to make your experience on the Silver Comet Trail a much safer one. While visiting the trail, here are a few good safety tips that you can think about. If you have an emergency, always remember to dial 911. Please remember to describe your approximate location on the Silver Comet Trail by several things. Make sure you watch for and know the closest mile marker to you. Remember the name of the last trailhead you passed. Remember the name of the trailhead or the location where you parked. And remember whether or not you traveled east or west on the trail and approximately how far you've traveled. Remember to use the buddy system. Never go on the Silver Comet Trail alone. And you can always bring self-protection. If you have a Georgia weapons carry license, you can legally carry a firearm on the Silver Comet Trail. And remember, some of the areas on the trail are very remote, and even sections near populated areas can be isolated. So lock your car and make sure your valuables are in the trunk. Keep everything out of sight, such as cell phones, GPS units, iPods, laptops, wallets, pocketbooks, backpacks. Never leave anything in your vehicle, and never leave your vehicle in a trailhead parking spot overnight. And also, remember to enjoy the beautiful trail that we have in Paulding County, Georgia. Today we learned that the trailhead located here at the Paulding Chamber is a perfect midpoint stop in Paulding on your ride between Cobb and Polk counties. With access to shopping and restaurants or even downtown Dallas, be sure to make this trailhead a stop on your next ride. Thanks for joining me today and be sure to tune in next time as we explore, unwind, and thrive here in Paulding County, Georgia. I'm Ashley Gulick and I want you to join me as we explore the Silver Comet Trail here in Paulding County, Georgia. Today we're at the Hiram Trailhead which is at mile marker 14.7 on the Silver Comet Trail and is located in the city of Hiram in Paulding County, Georgia. The trailhead is near the intersection of Highway 92 and Highway 278 and has plenty of space for parking if you choose to enter the trail from here. This trailhead is one of the most popular stops along the line in Paulding County, so let's go check out what you can do here at the Hiram Trailhead here on the Silver Comet Trail. There is a park adjacent to the trailhead and has restrooms, water, a play area for children, and covered picnic areas available for use. Also, don't forget to bring along your four-legged friends to the Hiram Trailhead and enjoy the dog park while visiting. Looking for things to do off of the trail? Then the Hiram Trailhead is the perfect stop. Just a short distance down Seaboard Avenue are a variety of restaurants, stores, and entertainment, including a movie theater, to meet your needs. Also, be sure to visit the bike shop located right off of the trail if you are looking for rentals or bike repairs to get you going back on the trail. If you make a stop at the Hiram Trailhead, make sure to venture west to mile marker 16.98 to the Scenic Railroad Bridge area on the Silver Comet Trail. While here, take a moment to take in the peacefulness and beauty of nature around you and maybe even stop to watch as the train passes. And now we are going to toss it over to Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Department to talk to you about safety on the trail. Hello, I'm Sergeant Ashley Henson with the Paulding County Sheriff's Office. I'm here today to give you some information to help keep you safe while you're on the Silver Comet Trail. We are constantly monitoring the trail. There are 21 camera locations between the Hiram Trailhead at the caboose and the Terra Drummond Trailhead. Deputies and dispatchers can monitor the trail via tablets to help maintain your safety. Our deputies patrol the Silver Comet Trail every day from dawn until dusk in smart cars, bicycles, ATVs, motorcycles, and UTVs. With that being said, there are still things you can do to make your experience on the Silver Comet Trail a much safer one. While visiting the trail, here are a few good safety tips that you can think about. If you have an emergency, always remember to dial 911. 
Please remember to describe your approximate location on the Silver Comet Trail by several things. Make sure you watch for and know the closest mile marker to you. Remember the name of the last trailhead you passed. Remember the name of the trailhead or the location where you parked. And remember whether or not you traveled east or west on the trail and approximately how far you've traveled. Remember to use the buddy system. Never go on the Silver Comet Trail alone. And you can always bring self-protection. If you have a Georgia weapons carry license, you can legally carry a firearm on the Silver Comet Trail. And remember, some of the areas on the trail are very remote, and even sections near populated areas can be isolated. So lock your car and make sure your valuables are in the trunk. Keep everything out of sight, such as cell phones, GPS units, iPods, laptops, wallets, pocketbooks, backpacks. Never leave anything in your vehicle, and never leave your vehicle in a trailhead parking spot overnight. And also, remember to enjoy the beautiful trail that we have in Paulden County, Georgia. So, today we learned that the Hiram Trailhead is the perfect stop for hopping on the trail for your ride, but also accommodating with easy access to convenient shopping and restaurants just a short distance away. Be sure to stop and check out this trailhead on your next ride through Paulding County. So please stay tuned and join me next time for more places to explore, unwind, and thrive here in Paulding County, Georgia. I'm Ashley Gulick and I want you to join me as I explore Paulding County, Georgia. Today we are headed out to Taylor Farm Park located at 1380 Pine Valley Road in Powder Springs, Georgia. Park hours are 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. So let's go see what all Taylor Farm Park has to offer. Looking for outdoor options for children? Then be sure to stop by the park's playground while you are here. The playground is a perfect stop for children of all ages and full of fun activities. There is also a picnic pavilion available if you want to make it a day at the park. So bring your snacks or lunch and make the most out of your time here at Taylor Farm Park. There's also a 1.25 mile walking trail around the park if walking or running fits more of your outdoor fitness needs. Be sure to take advantage of this easy to access trail and check out the beautiful park scenery while getting in your next cardio session. Make sure to plan a stop at the park's picturesque one and a half acre lake while you are here as well. Enjoy the nature surrounding the lake and enjoy a peaceful moment and scenery while you are here. But just remember, there is no fishing allowed at the lake. Be sure to pack your tennis gear for your next visit to Taylor Farm Park. Gather your friends and family for a morning, afternoon, or even an evening high energy tennis session at one of the park's four lighted tennis courts. Tennis is a great fitness option for all ages to enjoy, so remember to add tennis on your list of things to do while visiting the park. The park also has an indoor multifunctional gym if you want to take your next fitness or league session indoors. The gym hosts six basketball hoops with one lower to accommodate youth play. The gym here at Taylor Farm is also used for indoor volleyball and a variety of other sports and fitness classes. Be sure to contact Taylor Farm for open gym hours and to also find out more information on league sports that cater to a variety of ages. Today we learned that Taylor Farm Park is a great location to meet a variety of athletic needs for both leagues and individuals with both indoor and outdoor recreational options. Be sure to add a stop at Taylor Farm Park on your list of things to do here in Paulding County and tune in next time as we find more places to explore, unwind, and thrive.
Tina, can you tell us what we are about to make? Absolutely. Well, everybody loves drumsticks, wings, chicken thighs, chicken breasts, but you get a lot of extra calories when you cook it and eat the skin. So what I have today is a skinless drumstick recipe. Um, you can marinate it. You can also use this recipe with pork or any, really any white meat that you would like to use. And what I have here is um, our drumsticks have already taken the skin off. You can purchase them skinless or you can take the skin off yourself. Um, if you, you save a lot more money when you buy it with the skin on. Um, let me show you if you've never taken skin off of a, a drumstick. Just hold it by the end. You want to go up at the top, pull the skin down. There's a lot of membrane between it. And then sometimes it might take a knife to give you some extra help, but you just pull it off the end. Very and easy. And then your drumstick's ready to go. You've just shed a lot of calories and a lot of fat off of your chicken. All right, so let's go ahead and prepare our marinate for this. So um, we're going to do it in a Ziploc bag. That's the easiest way and less messy. Okay. So we start off with olive oil. So we want to put a quarter cup of olive oil in there. Olive oil is a healthier alternative to all your oils. You get your um, monosaturated fats with her, which are healthier for you. So we've got our olive oil. And then okay. we're gonna use a juice of a lemon and an orange. Okay. So um, it doesn't really matter how much. I like lots of citrus, so I, I ended too. up just putting a lot in there. If you, use, you can use concentrated orange juice or um, lemon juice if you don't have fresh available. Okay. The next thing is our garlic. Now we've got a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. You can also crush and you know real garlic and use a whole glow, uh, cove clove of garlic. Okay. And um, chili powder, and this is going to give it the nice. This is going to give it a nice kick. So we've got one teaspoon of chili powder. There you go. Good deal. All right. And then you can end it off with some salt, like maybe a teaspoon of kosher salt, and you okay. may want pow uh, pepper in there, but that gives you a nice. Um, marinade, so I'll kind of swish it around a little okay. bit. Now, is this something you can also use on the grill? Absolutely. We're going to bake it in the oven. We're going to bake it on 425, but this is awesome on a grill. Absolutely. And okay. in the summertime, mmm. But your wings, your drumsticks, your thighs on the grill, and you're going to have a tasty, tasty protein for your meal. So I'm going to put six in here. Okay. Six is probably a pretty good number for this amount of marinade. Okay. And if you want um, more, you could just double okay. the recipe. Main thing is get the air out and make sure that whatever that bag you put in. If you don't have a real sturdy Ziploc bag, you can double bag it. Okay. Put it in one and then put it in the other. So what I'm going to do is just kind of slosh it around a little bit, make sure everything's covered. Looks good already and it smells good already. Now is this also something you can put in overnight? Absolutely. We're going to marinate it for um, 30 minutes today. But you can marinate. The longer you marinate, as you know, mm -hmm. the flavor gets into the meat better. It's actually really good with pork chops too. So you're going to okay. do pork chops on a grill. This would be um, an awesome marinade. So what I'm going to do is put this in our fridge. Okay. And then I have one here that's already been marinated for about Great. an hour. Okay. So we're going to take this and you put it on a, a baking dish. Now you can put parchment paper. Okay. We've got foil on ours today and drizzle a little more olive oil on there or some cooking spray, whatever okay. your preference is. And um, So that just makes it not stick? That makes it not okay. stick too bad. Because you don't have the skin, you know, right. you've got straight straight with the meat. So I like to lay mine back and forth. It just gives them a little bit more room there. Okay. Okay. And it smells really good too. It smells too. good. So we'll move them over just a little bit. Mm. Looks delicious. I've went one more on this side. Oh, yummy. All right. So we're going to set these. Let me wipe my hands off. Nice and messy, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> All right, so now, as I said a minute ago, we're going to stick it in a 425 preheated oven, about 45 minutes. You know, with chicken, you would definitely want chicken good and cooked. Right. All right, so we're going to stick this in. And we already have one ready to go. The magic of TV. Okay, doesn't that look great? It looks awesome. You ready to dig in? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Let's take a sample. Mmm. 
Very good. Very good, nice kick. Low fat, only 76 calories per drumstick. 13 grams of good healthy fat, six grams of carbs, and 22 grams of protein. So eat up and be healthy. Hello, I'm Ashley Gulick and I want to invite you to join me today while I explore Paulding County, Georgia. Today, we're headed out to one of our awesome county parks, Mount Tabor Park. Mount Tabor Park is located on the eastern side of Paulding County at 1550 East Paulding Drive in Dallas, Georgia and has been around since 2002. The park has 155 acres of space with several trails, baseball and softball fields, tennis courts, and indoor recreational space and options. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go check out Mount Tabor Park. For anyone looking for a variety of recreational options, the Mount Tabor Park in Dallas, Georgia should definitely be on your list of places to visit here in Paulding County. If organized sports is not your thing, then no worries. There is a wide range of aerobic and fitness classes available such as dance, tai chi, and yoga. Be sure to check out recreation.paulding.gov for a full list of classes offered here at Mount Tabor Park. There are even art classes offered for younger children and teens. The indoor gym is used for basketball, volleyball, and other recreational activities throughout the year. There are youth and team spring and fall volleyball leagues that play here and also a winter basketball league. Be sure to call the park beforehand to check on availability. So here we go, nothing but net. Need a high intensity workout? Then try your hand at racquetball. Did you know that in just one hour of play, you can run up to or more than two miles and burn between six to 800 calories? Up the burn on your fitness routine and book a court today. Make sure to contact the park to reserve your spot the day before or day of if available. Rental is $2 per person per hour. There's even a spring and fall racquetball league for those competitive players out there. If you are a parent, coach, or even an adult looking for organized sports and league play, be sure to stop by Mount Tabor Park for more information on a range of programs available. Mount Tabor has five ball fields that any Paulding County team has access to reserve. There are tournaments played at the fields on a regular basis, so be sure to contact a Parks and Recreation staff member for availability and information on use. Tennis courts are also available for use but are first come first serve. The courts are a popular spot at the park, so be sure to get here early to get in a match or two. Not a pro but looking to learn more about tennis, then make sure to contact the park at 770-505-3885 for more information and pricing on your tennis lessons. And don't forget, courts are first come first serve. <laughs> As you enter the park, please make sure to stop by the 9-11 Memorial Liberty Garden. This garden is a special piece of the park and holds special meaning to Paulding County as it allows visitors to pay their respects to those who lost their lives on that tragic day in 2001. If you are in the area around September 11th, be sure to come out to the September 11th Memorial Service held here at Mount Tabor Park each year. Everyone is invited to attend and reflect on the memories of this day. For the outdoor enthusiast, Mount Tabor Park has an assortment of outdoor trails just waiting for you to discover. All of the park trails are open to both pedestrians and mountain bikers for use. Each trail differs in mileage and intensity, catering to an array of both those checking out the scene on foot or by bike. And don't worry, 
Although open to both those out for a walk or hitting the trails for an intense bike session, the trails are designed for bikers to go one way and pedestrians to go the other. Be sure to look for the signs at each trailhead to point out your way of travel. Now, let's go check out what these trails have to offer for you. The Pine Pong Trail is 1.5 miles in length, the Rock of Doom 2 miles, and the Booger Trail sits at the longest with 4 miles. So, come on out today and check out these trails unique to Mount Tabor Park and Paulding County. If you have children coming to visit the park, be sure to stop by the playground located near the park entrance and directly across from the 9-11 Memorial Liberty Garden. The park's playground is built for children of all ages to enjoy and is beside a pavilion that is also available for use. Please note that the pavilion is first come first served, so make sure to get here early. Be sure to take time to enjoy Mount Tabor's beautiful lake as well. Roughly an acre and a half in size, there is no fishing allowed, but you can still come out and enjoy the peacefulness of the surrounding nature, all while taking in the natural beauty of the park. So today we learned that Mount Tabor is a multifunctional park with many outdoor and indoor recreational options for all ages. Thanks for joining me today, and be sure to tune in next time as we explore, unwind, and thrive here in Paulding County, Georgia. Hello, I'm Ashley Gulick and I want to invite you to join me today while I explore Paulding County, Georgia. Now let's check out one of the county's newer additions, Burnt Hickory Park and the Wayne Kirby Community Center. Not only does Burnt Hickory sit on a beautiful rolling landscape, it also offers a multitude of recreational activities too. Be sure to take an afternoon or day to enjoy this beautiful Paulding County Park. Burnt Hickory Park and the Wayne Kirby Community Center is located on the northern end of Paulding County at 8650 Cartersville Highway in Dallas, Georgia. Burnt Hickory boasts 166 acres of recreational space and has been in operation since March of 2011. Burnt Hickory also holds several outdoor rec fields such as baseball and softball fields, lacrosse fields and tennis courts with many indoor recreational options as well. The community center and park staff also offer a wide range of classes perfect for all ages and fitness levels. The center has several state-of-the-art workout rooms available and classes to fit just about any schedule, day or evening. Check out recreation.paulding.gov to find a class that is perfect for you. Take in the view as you make your way into the park grounds. There is one playground on site that caters to children of all ages. Engage in nature, playtime, and even a little physical activity while enjoying and discovering the outdoors with your children. Burnt Hickory also has an outdoor pavilion available for use and it is first come first serve. Be sure to get here early, especially on the weekends, as this is the perfect area for an afternoon picnic at the park. There are also four ball fields that any local Paulding County team can reserve for practice or play. The park is a popular stop for baseball and softball tournaments, so please be sure to call ahead for availability and scheduling. Interested in youth or adult league play? Then make sure to contact the Parks and Recreation Department as well for information on league dates and the registration process. Playing on local league teams is the perfect way to introduce fun physical activity into your fitness schedule. Although a newer sport to the Paulding area and quickly gaining in popularity with youth recreational activities, Burnt Hickory has one lacrosse field available for use. 
Lacrosse has been a popular sport for years and even considered America's first sport as some historians have dated the sport back to North American Indian tribes. With several schools in the area introducing lacrosse into their sports rotations, be sure to come check out the field here if you are looking for a place to hone your skills or to take in a game. Tennis courts are also available for use during park hours. There are four courts here at Burnt Hickory Park and all are first come, first served. Similar to Mount Tabor, Burnt Hickory Park also has tennis lessons available too if this park is in your area. Please call 770-443-7540 if you are interested in lessons. From kids to seniors, tennis is a sport that anyone can play. Oh, so you're back for more? <laughs> Want to take your activity inside? Burnt Hickory Park has you covered. Come inside the Wayne Kirby Community Center and take in a game of racquetball at one of the two air-conditioned indoor courts. These courts must be reserved and reservations can be taken the day before or day of your visit. Cost is $2 per person per hour. Indoor facility rentals are available at the park to fit just about any size and type of function. There are three meeting rooms for smaller gatherings and a large banquet room that will accommodate up to 200 people. Interested in booking your next party, reception, or meeting, then please contact Burnt Hickory Park today at 770-443-7540. So today we learned that Burnt Hickory has plenty of recreational options whether you're looking for indoor or outdoor activities with a variety of classes available to accommodate all ages and fitness levels. Make sure to add a stop to Burnt Hickory Park on your list of Paulding County activities today. Thanks for joining me and be sure to tune in next time as we explore, unwind, and thrive here in Paulding County, Georgia. I'm Ashley Gulick and I want you to join me as we explore more of Paulding County, Georgia. Today we are heading to explore the newest Paulding County Park, Mulberry Rock Park. Mulberry Rock is located in southwest Paulding at 1849 Mulberry Rock Road in Dallas. The park is 160 acres total and the 100 acre first phase formally opened for use in November of 2017. It is the first multi-use park in the southwest Paulding area. So what are you waiting for? Let's go check out Mulberry Rock Park. Be sure to bring the kids out to enjoy the spacious playground at Mulberry Rock Park. The playground accommodates children of all ages and is the perfect place to bring them to burn off that extra energy. So parents, make sure to plan a morning or afternoon recreational outing to the park today. The park amenities also include one enclosed pavilion, five open air group shelters with picnic tables, and four single table family shelters, perfect for a picnic and afternoon at the park. The enclosed pavilion can hold up to 100 people and accommodations include heat and air, tables, chairs, a sink, refrigerator, and oven and microwave combination. For rental information, please contact the Paulding County Parks and Recreation Department at 770-445-8065. The trail at Mulberry Park is the perfect location to enjoy the beautiful park scenery and green space. The park has three miles of pedestrian trails that loop the entirety of the park and accommodates all levels of fitness from leisure trail walkers to more advanced runners. The three miles includes a one mile loop and a two mile loop that can be combined for a shorter or longer walking session. 
The trail even heads into the woods surrounding the park to add even more diversity to your walk or run. Bring your walking shoes and make plans to add a walk through Mulberry Rock Park to your list of outdoor activities. Now I'm going to toss it over to Mary Carol Sheffield with the University of Georgia Extension of Paulding County. She is going to tell us a little bit about the community garden at Mulberry Rock Park. Thanks Ashley. We're here today at the Mulberry Rock Community Garden and I'm Mary Carol Sheffield from the Paulding County Extension Office. I'm the Paulding County Agriculture and Natural Resources Agent and I'm here with Mike Polk, the Mulberry Rock Community Garden Manager. How many beds do we have? We've got I think 19 beds and they're uh, $20 a year and you have to uh, maintain your garden. It's not that uh, hard, you just got to plant it and water it and you'll have a bumper crop. So some of the benefits of community gardening that I've learned about in my work are that when people come together, um, they can learn from each other and there's a sense of community, which gives it its name, the community garden. A lot of people just think of it as you know, a place to grow food, but a lot of the appeal of it, I think, is coming together with the people in your community. So today we learned that a trip to Mulberry Rock Park is something you should definitely put on your bucket list of places to visit here in Paulding County. From the walking trails, playground, and community garden, there's a little something for everyone to enjoy here at the park. Thank you for joining me today and be sure to tune in next time as we explore, unwind, and thrive here in Paulding County. <laughs> <laughs>